Hello everyone, my name is Beatrice Chen and I'm speaking to you today from Chicago, Illinois. I'm currently a third year student at Curtis and I study viola with Xin Yun Huang. Today you will be hearing my performance of the Sonata for Solo Viola, Opus 11, Number 5, written by Paul Hindemith. Hindemith wrote this sonata in the year 1919, while he was still in his early 20s and just beginning to transition from playing the violin to playing the viola. Later on in his life, he would be known for being a violist, as well as composing lots of viola music, which I am currently trying to learn all of during this time. This piece in particular is divided into four movements. The first two are very short and compact, and they offer contrasting musical ideas, while the third movement is a scherzo, which shows Hindemith's a humorous side. The last movement is this huge, fantastical passacaglia, which brings together many elements um, and shows a lot of influence from the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, although this does not sound anything like Bach. This piece has so much to offer, and I really hope you enjoy listening to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Andrew Stump. I play the horn, and I will be performing Okukawula Kwekondere by Justinian Tamu Suza. This piece is an unaccompanied horn call, and it serves as the introduction to a larger work scored for horn, string quartet, and maracas. While the title of this piece, which is in the Luganda language of Uganda, does not have a literal translation into English, it roughly means the sound of a horn calling or reaching to someone who is far away and cannot be seen. Horn calls have been a staple of our repertoire for the horn for hundreds of years, and essentially a horn call is a very musically simple tune that's purpose is to be a signal to communicate across very long distances and they often have a very fanfare-like quality with a lot of flair. This piece is very rhythmically driven, and you'll hear quite a few sounds that are quite unexpected coming from a French horn, even for those of us who play this instrument ourselves. There's use of quarter tones, which are musical intervals, which are smaller than what our ears are generally used to hearing in Western music, which will make them sound quite dissonant or just a little bit off-key. Also listen for a section in which I will remove valve slides from the horn, which will cause the sound no longer to come out of the bell, but out of exposed pieces of tubing on the horn, which will change the sound quite dramatically. It mimics the sound of African percussion instruments. And lastly, listen for a section in which I will actually drum on the mute here in the bell of the horn with my right hand, and in some places even play and drum simultaneously. I hope you enjoy Okukawula Kwekandere. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Ken Shimiyatani. I'm a third year of AD student at Curtis. Today, Christine Ott, the first year of horn major student, and I'm gonna perform the horn sonata by Javier Camino. Javier Camino is the Mexican composer, lives in Quebec, Canada currently, and he wrote this piece on 2013, so it's quite a new piece. The Camino plays French horns, so he really knows how to bring out the beautiful horn sound in his music. And the first movement is dynamic and contains lots of beautiful melody. And the second movement has lots of beautiful lyrical lines. And the last movement is tango, so it has lots of interesting jazzy rhythms. So it is really good contrast with the first two movements. That today Christine will play the first movement and I will play the second and third movement. So hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Jack Bryant. I'm a horn player in my second year of the graduate diploma program here at Curtis. And I'm currently attending school remotely from Waleska, Georgia, northwest of Atlanta. While the circumstances of the pandemic have certainly presented challenges to musicians whose lives and careers are centered on large indoor gatherings, it's also presented opportunities for new and exciting creative projects that wouldn't be possible otherwise, and I think that these virtual recitals are a great example of that. Tonight, I've collaborated with my friends and colleagues Hannah Colbreth and Martina Smith, as well as the wonderful pianist Michelle Kahn, to record Jane Vignieri's Horn Sonata. Jane Vignieri was born in Ghent, Belgium in 1913 to a musical family, both her mother and grandfather studied composition, and she proved to be a prodigal talent herself, graduating from the Royal Music Conservatory in Ghent with degrees in music theory, harmony, and counterpoint by the age of 16. She later moved to Paris, where she studied violin and viola, and also took lessons with Nadia Boulanger and studied musical analysis with Paul Ducat. And I think that these uh, influences are evident in her music. Unfortunately, due to an incurable medical condition, she was forced to abandon her violin career, and so she decided to take up composition full-time. She returned to Ghent to join the faculty of the conservatory, and in 1942, she composed this sonata for the horn professor there, Maurice van Bokstela. It's wonderfully well-written for the horn, and I think that reflects the rich tradition of horn playing in Belgium from the late 19th century through the 20th century. It's the most commonly performed of her works, and it really is unique in the horn repertoire as a sonata in the impressionistic style. We had a great time putting this together. It, it's very fun to play. I think it really shows off the expressive qualities of the horn, as well as the more fanfarish and flashy qualities. Uh, so it's a rare treat to hear three different performers playing each a movement of a sonata back to back. So I hope you enjoy our rendition of Jane Vignieri's Horn Sonata. Thank you. Thank you. 